essay podcast, a show featuring conversations with leading practitioners of videographic criticism. I'm your host, Will DeGravio, and on today's show, I am very pleased to present The Journeys of Cary Grant, an audiovisual celebration. Back in July, I had the great opportunity to be able to partner with Dr. Charlotte Crofts, who is the festival director of the Cary Comes Home Festival, which, if you're not familiar with the festival, uh, is based in Bristol in the United Kingdom and is a festival that honors their native son, Mr. Cary Grant. Uh, now, this year, the festival was to be held in New York City to mark the 100th year anniversary of Cary Cary Grant's journey from the United Kingdom over here to the United States, but for obvious reasons, the festival in New York was canceled and uh, it was a virtual was a virtual event this year. But like I said, back in July, Charlotte, who I have the great privilege of working with in my capacity as a member um, of the ScreenWorks editorial team, uh, and I decided to partner on an event and put out a call for video essays. We asked uh, listeners of this podcast, fans of the Carrie Comes Home Festival, and really anybody out there on the internet uh, to submit video essays that related to Carrie Grant and more specifically, the theme of journeys. Now, we left this this theme of journeys pretty open-ended. It could be interpreted literally, you know, journeys that Cary Grant takes within his films. It could deal with Cary Grant's biography and personal journeys, uh, but it could also deal with fan journeys, your personal relationship with his films, watching them in different places as you grow older. It was it was very open-ended, uh, and you can read the full call for videos at thevideoessay.com slash Cary Grant. Uh, and one of the perks of submitting a video was that you had the chance to be invited uh, to join us at the Carrie Comes Home Festival for a live conversation uh, that would be sh- broadcast uh, through the festival channels. Um, and then that audio would also become an episode of the Video Essay podcast. So that's what you're about to listen to now. Uh, so there's a chance that you may have already watched that video. And if so, Thank you very much. Um, But I also know that sometimes people prefer to just listen to things in audio form when they're in a car, on a walk, what have you. Um, So here is your opportunity again. But I must remind you to please go and watch all of the video essays that we received um, for this event. Um, And you can find them all again at thevideoessay.com slash Cary Grant. But before we get to the festival audio, I want to reiterate a special request that I made um, in the last edition of the podcast's weekly newsletter, which, if you're not familiar, is called Notes on Videographic Criticism, and you can subscribe at thevideoessay.substack.com. But as I wrote in that newsletter uh, the other day, I was you know, starting to reflect on the past year. Um, And I was going through and updating the podcast website. We have a new about page. Um, A lot of the pages are just kind of more polished and updated and have more information about the show, what we've done, um, and videographic criticism more generally. And I was also adding four abstract trailers that I received um, as part of the homework that listeners were assigned earlier this year, which feels like years and years ago um, when we first started doing that back in April. Um, And if you're listening here now and you're not familiar with what I'm referring to, in April, um, in the midst of the pandemic, um, listeners of this show were assigned the five core videographic exercises developed by Christian Keithley, Jason Mattel, uh, and Catherine Grant for the Scholarship and Sound and Image Workshop at Middlebury College. Um, And all of these exercises are outlined at length in their open access online book, The Videographic Essay, Practice, and Pedagogy, or videographicessay.org. And as I was updating this website, I got I don't know, like I was kind of moved, like going through all of the videos that were there. Like, I don't think I really processed everything that had happened. And I kind of started tallying up all the videos and was like, oh my goodness, listeners thus far, because, you know, I'm still adding videos as they come in, have made a combined 68 videos, uh, which is truly remarkable. And again, you can find this on our website, videoessay.com. And it really is like an incredible 
achievement. Um, because as I as I wrote in the newsletter, when participants of the scholarship and sound and image workshop create these essays, like they all sit in the same room, they each have their own Mac, and there's a ton of collaboration and feedback and group watching. And there's a group of people who are facilitating the workshop who are like right there in the room with you and you can ask them technical questions or you can ask them what they think about your exercise. Um, and then after and then after each exercise is made, all, all of the exercises are screened for the entire group where people provide feedback. Um, and then we meet in small group settings to go over them all before the next exercise is assigned. So there's this an, an incredibly collaborative uh nature to the entire process that obviously because of the pandemic uh, was just completely not possible to do right now. So it really is remarkable that not only were listeners able to make um, so many videographic exercises, but just how great they were. And when, you know, when so many of you emailed me, there was just so many an wonderful anecdotes. Like I've been trying to do a video for so long and this finally gave me a reason to test it out or I've never done any editing software before. And this was so scary, but I had so much fun. Um, and it was like so great to read and hear and it and it brought like a smile to my face and what was a very dark time for for all of us really and so as i was reflecting on that i realized that we really need to honor all the work that the listeners did in in a new way and in a more serious way because one of the goals of this podcast is to encourage listeners to make videographic criticism of their own especially if you've never made any kind of video before so I figured that there would be no better way to begin 2021 than by passing the microphone to podcast listeners and specifically to those listeners who made uh, a videographic exercise. So here's, here's what I have in mind. If you made at least one exercise, please consider recording a roughly, you know, these are just guidelines. Again, like like the video graph exercises, I can only give guidelines. I can't assign hard rules. Um, but please consider recording a three to six minute audio reflection uh, and send it to me by January 12th, 2021. Uh, that was one month from when I originally put out the the call in my newsletter. So we're we're a little far we're we're a little closer to that deadline uh, today. Uh, but you can record this on your cell phone. Um, you could do it on a a, a nice microphone um, or on your computer. Really, whatever works for you. I'm not like as long as you are in a room that's relatively quiet and there's not a lot of background noise and we can hear you, please don't worry too much about, about the audio quality. The main thing is really keeping the focus on you and what it was like to create these exercises, especially during such a, a, a chaotic and scary time. And so the main question that I'd like you to answer is what did you learn from the process of creating one or more of the videographic exercises? And if you'd like to reflect further, some more some more prompts for you to consider. What advice would you give to someone who is looking to create a video for the first time? And notice how I say video. I don't mean a video essay. I mean just any kind of exercise, piece of videographic criticism, little video experiment. Um, what advice would you give them? And was there a videographic exercise made by someone else that you particularly enjoyed? Uh, what did you like about it? Why did you find it compelling? Uh, did it make you think about a media object or multiple media objects in a new way. And finally, if you if you want to help me out, and this is, I would say, the least important part of your audio reflection, um, what would you like to see the podcast look like in 2021? Is there anyone who you would like to see as a guest? Are there any topics that you'd like to see discussed either by me, by a certain guest, or by a panel of guests? Should we do more future homework assignments? In a way, I consider the Cary Grant videos to be a kind of homework assignment. And that was something that Charlotte and I talked about as well, where, you know, it wasn't, you know, we invited everyone who submitted a video by the deadline to join us at the festival, you know, because it was more about the process of creating, of enjoying our fandom and love for Cary Grant. So going forward, I'd like to try and foster that sense of community and collaboration and not and not feel like there are a lot of barriers um, to making video essays. So what, what should a future homework assignment look like? It could be an exercise. It could be a prompt where we all make a bunch of video essays. If you haven't yet, you should check out the latest issue of uh, The Cinephiles, which has the collection of video essays once upon a screen in which a bunch of video essays reflect video essayists, excuse me, uh, 
uh, reflect on media objects, uh, primarily films, that traumatized them as a child. Um, and again, that's linked to um, at the on our newsletter, the video essay.substack.com if you'd like to find that. But anyway, um, again, please send me your audio files if you choose to participate to my email, uh, which is just willdegravio at gmail.com or you can reach out to me um, another way, uh, DM me on Twitter or what have you. I can send you my email that way. By again, by January 12th. And then I will edit all of the files together and turn them into an episode later that month. Uh, and if you can't fit the file in an email for whatever reason, um, consider using a service like WeTransfer, um, but also like Google Drive and Dropbox are are fine. And this is a crucial thing. Please remember to introduce yourself uh, at some point in the audio recording, but preferably at the beginning. And it can be like a very short introduction, like, you know, my name is Will DeGravio. That, <laughs> it could be that short, but if you are a student somewhere or a professor somewhere, or you work as a film critic, or you are, want to say where you're making the video essay from, or you just want to say, you know, hey, my name is Will and I really enjoyed this and I can't wait to see what comes next. And then you go into your thing. So just just give us a little sense of uh, a sense of who you are at the beginning, preferably. And that's pretty much it. Again, like I I'm really excited to hear what people have to say. And my way of limiting this to the exercise, people who made the exercises is not meant to box out any other listeners, but really just to reflect on this specific uh, effort. But if you do have feedback for the show, I'm always uh, willing to hear it. So feel free to reach out to me on email. Um, and offer suggestions for 2021. I have I have a lot of exciting things in store uh, for the next year. And I will say, you know, I'm actually hoping to have another episode of the podcast uh, be released before the end of the year. But in case that doesn't happen, um, I will just say, you know, 2021 will be the first year that I'm not uh, a student, um, I guess, like since I was in kindergarten or preschool. Um, but, you know, in terms of how that affects me, you know, in what I've been doing in recent years, it means that I'm not taking film and media courses. I'm not, you know, I don't have a ton of, uh, I'm not able to, you know, go to lectures and connect with people and, you know, really lean into what I love and what is such an important outlet for me creatively, but also personally, emotionally. Um, and so increasingly for me, that is the podcast and it's also the newsletter. So I really want to, lean into that going into the new year. So when I say that I want ideas and suggestions, um, I really mean it because this is a, this is really important to me, uh, the podcast and I own, and it's, I've said this before, but it's unbelievable to me that it, it grows and it, people continue to enjoy it and like it. And so I want to keep doing things and I really love collaborating with people. Um, and I have some really exciting things in the works um, and some other potential future collaborations. Um, but if you would like to collaborate going into the new year, I would really love to do that. Um, and I think, you know, I think the audio that you're about to hear for the Cary Grant Festival um, is a perfect example of the kinds of things that I would like to do both for this podcast and for the audience, but also for me personally, because uh, the event was a lot of fun and it's so great to see uh, people making video essays. Yeah. And I really love it. So if this does turn out to be the final episode of the year, uh, thank you very much. Uh, this, I guess, is the first full calendar year of the Video Essay Podcast since we began late summer 2019. So uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, and without further ado, here is the Journeys of Cary Grant, an audiovisual celebration. everyone. Thank you for joining us. This is the Journeys of Cary Grant, um, an audiovisual celebration. Um, just a little bit of background before we get to introductions of our panelists here. Several months ago, I, I'm not sure when the exact right month was, um, Charlotte Crofts and I, who's the director of the Cary Comes Home Festival, um, kind of got together and talked about doing an idea um, of some type of video essay 
contest screening blogathon, whatever you want to call it, um, centered around Cary Grant. Um, and I host uh, something called the Video Essay Podcast, which um, features conversations with uh, critics, scholars, filmmakers, and all creators of videographic criticism. Philip Brubaker right there was a guest on the second episode of the show. So if you want more Philip after this, you should go check that out, <laughs> um, which you definitely will. And so um, essentially we decided to partner and put out a call for video essays and ask people to create videos around the theme of journeys loosely defined. Um, and I think if there's anything that this conversation will show, it's that there's an infinite number of ways to <laughs> interpret what a journey is, especially when it comes to movie going and, um, being a film fan and fan of Cary Grant. Um, and so we've been gathering all of those videos and kind of sharing them as they come in. Um, this is all, but I think maybe one or two, two videos um, will be discussed tonight. Um, all those are available at our showcase. Um, and so you can go and find out more information about this event and about the videos um, that were created. Um, I know my website link is thevideoessay.com slash Cary Grant. Um, and they're also available on the Cary Comes Home uh, website as well. They're kind of cross posted either way. So you'll get you know, whichever URL you go to, um, you'll get it right. Um, anything you'd like to add, Shroud? And congratulations and thank you for putting on this, this yeah, festival. I mean, it's, uh, amazing. This is, this is such a treat because um, we, me and Will put this thing out there and we didn't know if anybody would respond, if anyone would send any videos in. And gradually they started coming in and and just to let people know that if you did want to do a video, we would still feature it on the website. Um, so it, the scheme, so if you know of anybody that's in working on Cary Grant or anything like that, do encourage them to submit something. Um, and yeah, just delighted to have you all here. It's a very different, um, we've not done anything like this before as the festival. Uh, I think it's reaching out to a really strong community. I think the video essay community is a really interesting um, space at the moment, um, really growing. So yeah, thank you so much for coming. And I'm really excited to hear this talk and this, these discussions, these conversations. Absolutely. And so we sent kind of two main questions or multi-part questions kind of to everyone in advance um, or just a couple of days ago. So they didn't have too much head time, but just to kind of get the conversation going. Mm -hmm. um, now, this whole event is based around the idea that you've maybe seen some of the video essays that have been shown before. Um, we understand that you may not have. That's OK. Hopefully you'll still get something away from this event or maybe it will incentivize you to go seek out those video essays. So we're not going to play them now or summarize them um, at this point. But to our panelists here, if I ask you a question, perhaps in your first answer, you could just give a quick little summary of, of perhaps the, the films that you use in your essay about Cary Grant and just kind of give us the general, the gist of it um, as well. And the first question, and I'm going to put Philip on the spot here first, because like I said, he is, he has a little more experience in my questioning styles. So maybe he'll be a little more prepared to go here is how do you see your video relating to the theme of journeys and how did that theme inform the creation of your video essay? And I'll, I'll steal the first part for you because I think your video is perhaps at least in my view, might be to a viewer unclear how it relates to journeys. I have my own take on, for folks who don't know, Philip's video is a super cut of impressions of and Cary Grant throughout history and TV and film history. It's awesome. Just check it out. So Philip, that question to you and tell us, how does your, how does your video essay relate to the theme of journeys? <laughs> um, thanks for having me on this uh, Zoom call with everybody. I really appreciate the opportunity to to talk about the the video essay that I made and, and everything that you guys did too. So the journey, well, I don't know if there's a particular concrete linear journey uh, that Cary Grant undergoes in my video. Uh, you could say that it's sort of, um, it's kind of a progression of um, his celebrity going on a journey because it starts off with a, a clip of, of uh, Kyle McLaughlin playing him as a younger man, and it concludes with footage of Cary Grant's uh, Lifetime Achievement Award at the Oscars. So I don't know if it follows a completely linear path from young man to older man uh, completely faithfully, but that's sort of, sort of the arc. And, I mean, not to turn the spotlight on me, but it was more my journey, I think, that informed uh, the video because uh, as a lot of video essayists know, making a video essay, and I, I mean, I don't even know if I can really call what I did in this case a video essay, but when you're making a video work where you're uh, sampling various films and whatnot to kind of, you know, make an argument, it's a process and that process can be like a journey because 
when Will first told me that he was he was working on this Carrie Comes Home Festival and he asked if I had anything that I wanted to contribute, I, I wasn't sure at the time. The first thing I thought of was the impression that I saw Dana Carvey do of Cary Grant, like back in the nineties. And I thought, and that really stayed with me. And I thought it was a hilarious impression, but I thought, is there, is there really a video here? And I I had the idea of doing a video of just impressions of Cary Grant, but I wasn't sure if, if that was enough really to get started on. So, and at the same time I was working on another video essay about the Robert Altman film, the long goodbye. And so I kind of put the Cary thing on the shelf for a while. But then while I was working on the long goodbye video essay, there's, I came across a scene in Altman's film where the attendant at the, uh, the, um, the gate for an apartment complex does an impression of Cary Grant. And I was like, Whoa, like what a, what a crazy moment of serendipity, right? Like, as I have this thing on my mind, I see this impression on something else that I'm working on. So I was like, okay, well, if I can have the, the Dana Carvey clip, and this clip, maybe I can build something out of that. Something fun, you know, something light. Uh, and I thought maybe, I didn't know if anybody else would do anything like that. So I thought I would pursue it and just kind of see where it took me. And so it took me on the journey. And I think, but to answer your question about the journey that Cary Grant undergoes, um, the it is kind of a journey for him. And also the the, the term impression I would use kind of in a double way because yeah these are these are mimicry of Cary Grant's you know voice and mannerisms but also it's kind of like it's just an impression of him because you never really see him that much in the video and what you do see of him it's not the classic iconic Cary Grant you know he's got white hair he's older and it's it kind of reflects the fact that this video does not completely get at Cary Grant. And it may have something to do with the fact that beyond his films, I really don't know much about his life or, 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 you know, his own kind of personal story. So it's interesting to hear uh, the take on him from the other video essayists as well. I I really enjoyed it. And I, it had a lot of resonance in a way with Roberto's video, because it's about these kind of global flows of Cary Grant in a way, um, and his stardom kind of exceeding his his own nationality and his adopted nationality of being, he's British who lived in America and adopted American citizenship. Um, but I just, the voices, just I loved um, in Roberto's film, hearing all these Cary Grants with a different voice. And it was so odd, but those are the voices that you knew him as when you heard them, because that's how you experienced it. So I, I was actually really delighted to see that he had, Roberto had a clip of Cary Granite from the Flintstones. <laughs> Cause that was something that I wasn't able to locate for my video. <laughs> <laughs> Roberto, do you want to jump in here and kind of um, tackle that question and perhaps uh, kind of build off what Charlotte was saying there? I too loved your video. And um, just, I think one thing that runs through so many of these videos is the person, that personal journey that Philip mentioned. So I'd be curious to hear you talk about that as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. Well, for me, it was a bit of an act that I ended up doing the video how that I did because I was, can you hear me by the way? Yes. Okay. Um, I couldn't find a lot of materials for Cary Grant that I had in my collection. And so I came to this uh, website where I could get the movies, but I could get them in Spanish. And at first I was a little bit annoyed because I, I wanted the originals. And it was then that I, I started thinking, wait, I used to watch these movies in Spanish. So why am I making such a big deal about the fact that I cannot get them in English? And that sort of gave me the idea of it. And I had already been brainstorming about what I could do related to journeys that would be more personal and that would be different. And that sort of gave it to me, you know, but so it was a combination of, of having that background of, of uh, having watched them in Spanish and also a bit of an accident that I just could not get hold of copies in the original language through the website that I was using to, to get them. So, so that kind of like triggered the idea. Yeah, I love I love that you say that. And one of the things for those who maybe aren't um, familiar with the video essay podcast is we often ask people, well, kind of what's your origin story? How'd you get involved in this? And this idea of that the <clears throat> audiovisual essayist often has to pull materials from wherever they can. And whether it's a low quality video of a DVD or something that they find on YouTube, 
And then that kind of shapes the piece itself. So I'd be curious, how would you, if you had had the, if you had like a stack of Blu-rays next to all the perfect films and were able to rip them and whatever, how would, how did you originally reimagine the piece? What would you have done differently or maybe differently is not the right word. What would you have done if you had succeeded in finding those other films? Well, I think originally I was going with what I, the kind of, the the type of Cary Grant movies that I liked, which I, I re, I'm a huge fan of the ones he did with Irene Dunn. So that's what I, that's where I was going with. I was thought, okay, let me see what I can find there that is related to the topic of journeys. And, uh, and then I also was trying to look at uh, more obscure Cary Grant movies, you know, so I wouldn't use the same clips that I figured appear on, on the different documentaries and such. So that was kind of what I had in mind that I was searching. But then, you know, I, I just couldn't get them. And, uh, and another thing that happened was that I did have a copy of Houseboat, and, uh, which has uh, Sophia Loren. And I think part of what probably made my brain uh, get the idea was also that recently I watched an old Sophia Lauren movie in which I realized I did not recognize her Italian voice because I was more familiar with her Spanish voice. And so that also triggered the idea. That, so I had it there in my mind. I was like, wait, oh, uh, you know, I can I can work around this idea. And, and when I was putting it together, I actually decided to watch the movies in Spanish because I figured, well, I'm going to do it in Spanish. Let me watch them in Spanish. And it was also interesting to me that I had seen all these documentaries uh, talking about the importance of Cary Grant's voice, and I didn't have any trouble watching them in Spanish. I enjoyed them. Uh, some jokes don't work, obviously, but it was okay. I love the fact um, that you didn't put subtitles on and um, you just assumed a knowledge or not a knowledge, and, and we had to just figure out what they were saying from our memory of the film. I thought that was that was really powerful. Really enjoyed that. Well, actually, that was also because um, originally I was trying to think of scenes that wouldn't be so obvious, like I wanted to do something different. But the moment I decided I was going to do the dubbing, I realized, okay, this is not going to work. Because if I add subtitles, then you add text, and then you it's a different experience. And two, if people are not going to have subtitles, then they better be familiar with the scenes because they they need to have an idea of what's going on and and that and so it, it reverted the, the form of the video essay i went from wanting to use very uh less common uh Cary grant clips to having to go look for the more classical ones you know the with him with ingrid bergman uh, on the train and things so that people would know what it's about even if they don't know what he's actually saying in the scene right Anna, I saw you wanted to say something. Go ahead. You yeah, know, go ahead, Anna. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> now, I just want to ask uh, Roberto uh, about the split, the split screen that he used. And I think it's really interesting because it's creating a dialogue in between scenes. And uh, so I was just uh, wanted to hear him talking about that. Okay, yeah. Well, that, after I, I knew that I was going to do the dubbing and that I was going to use the, the more canonical or more well-known scenes, I realized, well, I didn't want this to just be a collection of clips. I want this to have something else going on. And that's when I got the idea of doing the multi-screen and of trying to pick scenes that, for example, uh, when he's, like, say, uh, talking to Ingrid Bergman, he's also in the scene talking to Loretta Young, although I cut away Loretta Young because she was distracting. So... But but he's basically doing the same thing and in both scenes. It's like talking to a woman and telling her, oh, I love you, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but in two different movies, and then sort of the sound from one carries over to the... So that was kind of the idea. Anna Marine uh, made a wonderful uh, video, Chicken in the Icebox, um, which is, of course, referenced to Notorious. And speaking about personal videos yours is deep a deeply personal uh video and it's structured as kind of this i guess i uh, like a love letter um to gary Cary grant in which you offer like a mix of film analysis but also your memories of of seeing him uh for the first time as a as a child and your relationship to his films um so i guess the same question to you you know talk a little bit about the journey i guess of making your video essay but also this deeply personal journey uh that you bring us on um in your work 
Yeah, well, first of all, I want to thank you for the invitation because I was supposed to be in Bristol and I had that plan for a year. And um, and yeah, because of the situation, I was supposed to be watching Carrigan movie all weekend with my friend Dan living in Devon. So um, that's a good consolation to be able to talk to you guys. So that's great. So to answer your question, um, yeah, uh, it's uh, yeah. I guess it's a personal journey to try to define um, um, why uh, why um, Caragrin was so important to me. And um, at the beginning, I had some other ideas, and uh, and uh, and it was really long before before I started uh, really thinking of um, of this essay. And finally, I'm like, you know, you really need to define that, you know. So at the end, I think I, I guess we can say that it's a personal journey to Cary Grant, or just to understand, you know, how. Um, why I'm, you know, this madness I have about Cary Grant because I'm pretty mad about him. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, no, that's it. Uh, what else? Um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain. Um, because um, at the beginning I had some other ideas and uh, like creating a dialogue in between uh, his character in different films. So I started working on that. And finally, uh, I wanted to do something more personal, I think. And I thought, you know, maybe some other fan, I hate this word, but um, uh, would maybe uh, find their own definition also uh, through this different uh, film uh, extract that I um, put in this uh, essay. Oh, I, I love the personal approach. I think it was is very powerful, and I just love the starting with the chicken in the ice box. It's just such a a powerful uh, uh, mixture of the domestic and you know that particularly the references to notorious the you know the fact that he's he's been damaged somehow. Um, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, I'm sorry for the length song because it was a more, it was a bit longer comparing to the other essays. But uh, five minutes to define why I'm so mad about Caragrand was too difficult for me, and it's really funny. Like uh, it's Kendall, huh, right? Uh, who made this film also about Notorious and this uh, love relationship uh, with Ingrid Berman in the film, and and the same uh, shot. You know, she started also with a, this shot when he's um when you can see uh, his shadow and he, his back and it was uh, that was really funny to discover the film afterwards and uh, and the other film actually so who's going to go next i think that's a good segue to asking uh Kendall could kind of contribute on you know what did i guess did you have a chance to watch anna marine's video and kind of maybe talk about perhaps any similarities between but also please answer the question we've been asking everyone about your creative journey and how your video relates to uh, to journeys, and you, I believe you two are the only ones that used voiceover as well. Um, I believe that's the case. So another another similarity there as well, right? Yeah. Do I think? Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, when Dr. Croft sent the invitation, I almost discounted it completely because I'd never done a video essay before, and I had no idea how. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> As, as often happens with technical matters, I just asked my nine-year-old how to do it. And the reason why was that I immediately had an idea of what to do because Notorious is my favorite Cary Grant performance. And I actually, in my mind, saw it as a journey and his personal journey. So, it, and, it, and it's just that interesting way of Hitchcock, Hitchcock the MacGuffin where you've got all this tension over all these different plot points, but it's really about a different kind of journey. And um, I, I think that Cary Grant so rarely had a deeply emotional in his films. So much of what he's done has been lighter and um, comedy, romance, that sort of a thing. And he was clearly a little nervous about going deeper, but here he definitely does. And he shows you what he could have done if he had taken on more challenging 
you know, emotionally challenging roles. So we've just watched Penny Serenade as part of the um, Cary Grant Festival, and it's a very different film, obviously, than Notorious, but there were elements of the performance in Notorious in some of the, the moments in Penny Serenade of those kind of deeply ang- anguish kind of um under the surface and it's quite striking just having seen your video essay recently and then seeing that performance that, that very different kinds of filmmaking very different but but it's the I think there are a couple of films like None But The Lonely Heart as well in which he was able to play a dramatic role but not as many as we perhaps would have liked it would have been lovely to see him play in more more dramatic roles yeah and, and I think what what got me about about this particular performance, looking at this film again, after having watched it for years and years over and over again, is that it's a very physical performance. A lot of his effect is through his physicality, which is something I'd always associated with his comedies. The kind of screwball stuff he did with Irene Dunn and, you know, just those roots in tumbling on the stage, you know, at the beginning of his career. But I he was able to translate that into deeply emotional performances, which you do see in Penny Serenade. But I think he he brought it to a much higher level in this performance in Notorious, where, where just a look on his face, yes, but also just him standing with his back to the camera. It really struck me how much you learned about his disappointment, about his fear, his background, he doesn't say a single word about his background, about what has happened to him to make him this way, about poor dear Alicia. But you know that he's damaged and you know that something terrible has happened. There's a whole story in his body language. Can, can I ask you, it's a bit like um, Philip and Roberto were saying, like, because you said you've not made a video essay before, was there something in the process of actually playing with the, the clips on the timeline which elicited new knowledge that you perhaps wouldn't have got just from writing about it? Definitely. And it made me realise that it was something I needed, that I needed to engage with um, film criticism and ex- exploration of film in a visual manner. And if I'm not creating the films myself, then the next best thing is to dive into uh, the creation of another and really look at the details. So so I, I feel turned on to the process of video essays now. Like it's something I wanna do because it, it will help me to experience these films. I mean, how many times have I seen Notorious? I've been watching it since I was a teenager, but I, I feel almost entirely differently about this film now. It's much deeper to me now. So, so mm. yeah, it, it was a revelation. Yeah. Wow. yeah. I have a, I have a follow-up question as well. Well, first of all, I, I will say one of the things that Charlotte and I talked about when we did this was um, not trying to make this a competition or to, or, or to try and have any barriers to entry in the hope that folks would create their first video essay as part of this. So I'm very pleased to have you do that. And, I hope anyone watching kind of takes the leap of faith um, because as so many of you have said, you don't really know what you're doing or what your plan is until you start doing it. So you kind of got to just dive in. But I, I was am surprised to hear you say that. I didn't know this was your first video essay because in my, in my notes, as I was watching it, the question I, I had for you was um, that there are just great visual matches to your voiceover that are so keen and, crisp and but also subtle but powerful in that way and that you're not overly drawing our attention to it but it's there like i'm think a couple is when you say that Cary grant wants to contain ingrid berman in notorious and then he wrapped you just you show him wrapping the handkerchief around her waist or he can't control her and it's the car steering wheel or their love is a mirage and he's looking out across the sandy beach and i'd be curious for those images were you finding the images and then doing your voiceover after the fact or did you kind of write your script in your voiceover and then go and search for images that matched the language like what was the interplay there like i i went through the film and um applied a lot of criticisms and viewpoints about the film that passed beyond my own so just the, the idea of him controlling her by putting that handkerchief around her, I just have that in mind. That was in one image. And then him trying to control her by kind of holding on to the, the, the steering wheel. Mm-hmm. Those things were in my mind. But for the most part, I had previous critical impressions of my own and others 
that I was looking for where I really felt that from the film. I knew it made me feel that way, but where are the details that really elicit that emotional reaction? Mm. And, you know, it was almost 100% silent. So I thought narration made sense because it was body language. It was, you know, it was a look here and there. Yeah. Can I just stop you all there and just draw attention to my reference to her outfit at the beginning of um, Notorious? I just want you to appreciate that. Thank you. Carry on. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Who shall we pick on next? Thank you for that very much. Um, I think speaking of finely tuned editing, um, perhaps you could ask Ian um, to answer this question, which... um, you know, your piece for everyone should go watch. And I think it's only about two minutes. So no one really has an excuse not to just throw it on real quick when they have a free moment at work or something. And your piece is called Mr. Grant's dream house. Um, and you basically a handful of care grant films, maybe 10 or so. Um, and you kind of piece them all together. Uh, to create this continuous sequence where Cary Grant is moving through his dream house. And of course, it's all these different films. And you even have a disclaimer at one point, he's in the submarine, which we'll get to Cormac in a minute. But in other times, he's in the train in North by Northwest. Um, so again, how do, I think it's pretty clear how yours answers the questions of journeys. But I think everyone would be fascinated to hear how you came up with this. Um, and can you teach us about editing and how you made it look so great? Um, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Well, I mean, really, like like Kendall, I, I just get taught by nine year olds on YouTube. Really, <laughs> that, that, that's 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 the secret. Um, but thanks, thanks very much for that, and obviously, thanks for inviting inviting me um, to to this. Um, I don't know. I mean, the idea really came to me just because I, I tend to think very small um, all the time. So the first thing I thought of. Um, in terms of journeys, the, the scene I thought of from a, a Cary Grant film was from Bringing Up Baby, um, when um, he keeps getting up from the dining room table and following George the dog because um, he thinks he's got his dinosaur bone and he kind of, kind of keeps following out out um, out of the door, then coming back and coming round like that. So it's really just, uh, I just that just immediately struck me um, um, around the theme of journeys. So I was thinking of very kind of small journeys in terms of just walking, walking around the house and walking through doors. So that's where the, the concept came from. But then, um, you know, I, then I thought, well, let's have a journey, which also is quite expansive. So you move, you go through one door and then you're suddenly in, a, in another film. So it's a journey from film to film. Um, and, and, and then I kind of thought, actually, even though it is only just over two minutes long, it would probably outstay its welcome if all Cary Grant was doing was just walking through doors through the whole thing. So I thought (laughs) um, I would try and kind of have him actually look at him doing things, you know, in in, in certain rooms within the house. And I would have loved to have had um, done it so that there was kind of um, a a performance in every sort of room you can think of. Um, I didn't quite manage that in, 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 in the end. So in order to kind of have him kind of um sort of witnessing himself doing things i had to have some sort of scenes where he was more of kind of a looker rather than just just walking through the doors so that allowed me to kind of bring in sort of the films where he's more of an investigator figure so like the, the hitchcock thrillers um and it so it allowed me to kind of move from genre to genre so a journey from genre to genre as well so so they those were the things in my mind but in terms of the editing i just like um it's just a jigsaw puzzle and and it and it just just involves really just trying out lots of different um matches so i was just i was obviously trying to kind of um create that illusion of continuity um between different films without it seeming too slick i wanted you know i wanted you to see the joins um a, a, as well um and yeah so i, I you know i i kind of captured a lot more clips than i actually used and and you know and just tried to kind of find the ones that, that matched uh so I, you know i i think it's i think the process of, of editing is funny and i you know i kind of like it just kind of makes me laugh when i find a um, match that makes me smile i think well that's probably the one one to keep in and i was definitely i was trying to kind of capture a sort of hopefully create something that's quite charming because that's the sort of the aspect of the carrie grant persona that i really wanted to try and personify in the video I love that idea of it, if it kind of tickles you, you leave it in, like that humour is a tool in editing choices. I've not heard anyone describe that before. I really love that. Yeah, well, you've got to entertain yourself yeah. somehow, haven't you? So. <laughs> Next day and age. Yeah. 
the video reminded me, I, one of someone here probably knows this better. I think it was Rivette or one of the Kaya critics talked about how Humphrey Bogart walks across the street in the big sleep. And there's just something about that that is like so powerful and everything. And your video made me think that, wow, Cary Grant really walks through a room better than everyone else which is like a funny thing to think but it's like so true and i don't know that's i don't really have anything to say other than that and i'm not really sure why i'll have to keep rewatching your video but I'm curious to hear what you think of that if anyone else i see some it's several fun. of you nodding so if anyone wants to chime in yeah it's like the back of his head is i think is it anna that i think his back of his head is in both anna's and kendall's film but just the back of his head is telling you so much and uh I don't know what, what it is about him, his, his grace, and but not in a kind of pat way. You know, everyone talks about him being suave, but it's more complex and more hard work than that. Um, but yeah, really good. I mean, I suppose, uh, suppose that was... Yeah. Sorry, oh, sorry, Anna, you go. No, 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 I had the feeling that Will was uh, telling um, about, you know, Carrie's being elegant also in uh, the, the film um, about petticoats. Um, uh, Operation Jupon, they were, uh, I'm not sure of the title in English, Petticoat. Uh, Operation Petticoat. Operation, Petticoat. Operation Petticoat. Petticoat, yeah. So I'm not sure uh, if the, who, who made this film. Comment. Yeah, that was, uh, that's mine, yeah. Oh, right. um, yeah. Yeah, I, I have a, I had a similar feeling, actually. Really? To curious at the same time, and at the, you can see both uh, both sides of Cara Grant in this, you know, little... Uh, on this submarine like that, and I really like uh, the way you shot it. So, uh, not you shot it, but you edited it. <laughs> Sorry. Now go Ian, ahead. did you have something you wanted to say? Yeah, earlier, no, and just, then we'll get just, to um, Yeah. I suppose another intention of the video was obviously to try and kind of focus on seemingly incidental moments and actually kind of allow a kind of um, concentration on Cary Grant's performance just just in those moments where he is just walking um, or he's just opening a, a door. And so, you know, I'm not sure, I, I, I'm not really analysing those moments, but it kind of just by putting them all together, it allows kind of a focus on those moments that might otherwise get lost. But I, but I did find, think it was very interesting um, um, to, to think about my one in relation to Cor Cormac's video, because obviously you, you've, you've found Found the film where the kind of the walking along a corridor is absolutely central to to, to the drama. So they're not incident, they're not meant to be incidental movements in, mm. in your your case. Whereas the ones I kind of chose were were the moments that you you kind of like don't usually notice. Yeah, th thank you, Ian, and thank you. And, and I think Cormac, this is a perfect segue uh, <laughs> to you. So I guess I kind of the same question to Ian, but I think you also hyper focus on one film obviously and as ian has already alluded to how the tight space in the movement functions as part of the drama but also as you write in your description as part of the comedy it's like every time you see that shot you just instinctively kind of start laughing you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um um yeah thank you uh thank you for having me yeah i it was um I, I, this this process for the for this particular video essay was a little bit like Phillips mentioned, a little bit of a journey. For me, this year has been quite a kind of a journey putting together video essays and finding kind of uh, ways of working. So this was a really nice opportunity to do something a little bit different. Um, work to a, you know, work with a very specific kind of goal in mind and try and find that journey. Um, and that was really interesting at the start. I, I you know, I wasn't really... Um, I wasn't really aware of uh, much beyond the kind of Cary Grant's big films. So, um, you know, I could, I could tell you every beat in North by Northwest, but beyond that, I was a little bit hazy. So it was really interesting to go back and work through um, some films. And I, I um, when I found out that he'd made two submarine films, he'd, he'd done Destination Tokyo as well. So I kind of, that, that hooked me in because I, I, I'm a sucker for a submarine. Um, so I couldn't resist they couldn't resist the opportunity to go and look at those. And I thought maybe I could put them in dialogue with each other. And that might be quite interesting because there's, you know, there's the years apart um, and, you know, that, that kind of, uh, there's that journey of time. And that might be really interesting to look at his, his performance and the changes in him as an actor. Um, and when I got into it, uh, I, 
I struggled with that. I struggled with that for a few weeks and I kind of, I, I suppose I got to a point where I felt if I'm wrangling this too much, it's not, it's, it can't be working. Um, so I went back to Petticoat and watched it again. And it struck me on the second watch, that shot that I, that I start the, um, that I start the essay with where he walks into the corridor. So that's, that's like four minutes into the film. Um, and it struck me that on the second time round, that meant so much watching it the second time after having seen everything happened in the corridors and all of the little interactions that went on. Um, but it doesn't get a coda at the end of the film. So you only really get the significance of it the second time you watch the film and he walks into the corridor and he looks down and you get the reverse and you realize that's the reflection he's having. He's reflecting on the journey he had. Um, and that sealed it for me at that point. That was, I knew then that this was just going to be those corridors and it was just going to be those moments. Um, and then in the making of it a little bit like, like like Ian, I was looking for I was looking for a rhythm, and then I found a rhythm which was partly in the way he moved, but also partly in the way he um, he spoke. Um, all the little good mornings and the little the little throwaways where uh, he he'll speak to someone, and then there's a little sort of mumble under his breath, a little um, a little throwaway comment, and and those set up a, a kind of a, a a speed that I was able to edit with. I was able to carry through. Um, and it's also, uh, it, you know, he, like you say, it's not necessarily that there's a, a, an obvious suave to the way he moves, but there's something in his movement that is so, um, so easy to watch. Um, you know, the, the, the look, uh, the look after he opens the, he opens the, the, the head and sees the pig. We never see the pig. Um, and he closes the door and he looks away and there's that just that little brief looked off to the side is, I could have probably held that. I, I, I would have liked to freeze that and hold that for a while because there's something in that look which is really gorgeous as well. So um, it was just really enjoyable to work with, uh, work with an actor and his performance uh, that I didn't know very well, but I learned so much having done it, you know, so much more about him. And that's, that was a really fun journey actually, to be on as well. I actually have read several Grant biographies, probably seen just about all of his films, and I learned so much through this process. I learned things about him that I'd never conceived of, and that's what was also fascinating about it for me. Yeah, yeah. I I, I did, I, I set out to read a, a biography, and I, um, I got about halfway through, and I asked myself, what was I... What was I genuinely learning from this that was going to help me make a video essay? And um, uh, not enough was the answer. So I just went and watched a few more films instead. And, uh, you know, I think that was, you know, I, I like I say, um, as I work through figuring out how to make essays, I'm realizing that sometimes it is just that process of gathering material, just more and more content so that you can splurge it onto your timeline and then, and then let the timeline help you figure it out. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. so profound, Cormac, because I'm teaching videographic film to my students and none of them have done it before. And um, and they're kind of um, at the stage where they're doing a proposal and they're doing a detailed plan. And it's just like, well, to even make the detailed plan, start playing with some footage. Yeah. <laughs> start manipulating it. And we had Catherine Grant came to speak to our students a few years ago and she said it's precisely that. If, you know, once you start... It's a material. I know it's all digital now, but it is yeah. a material. Once you get it on a timeline, it's material and you learn things through juxtaposition. And um, so it's really delightful to hear you say that because then it's not just me saying it. No, no. It, I, I, you know, I am, um, I, my description that I've put on Vimeo for this particular video, initially that was going to be a voiceover and I'd written that out and I, I thought I, I, I'd find sort of moments that I thought I could work it with. And I had a lot more of the, um, the above water stuff the pink submarine and the truck torpedo and i had all that in in one version as well um and it all just uh, it, it kind of didn't feel it didn't feel enough carry um it didn't feel like enough of, of of what i wanted that journey for him to be um and then I, yeah stumbling across the kind of the the narrow corridor and at one point i had an iphone filter on it as well and it worked really well it worked so well i wish i'd left it in now because <laughs> just dropping that right in the middle of the frame and blanking everything else off and he he just filled it so perfectly it's just like these sort of little sort of profile moments in the corridor which is beautiful um but then again that wasn't necessarily what it was about so <laughs> you know there are at least five versions of everything i've ever done if not more <laughs> 
that, that's quite a nice segue to Ian's film because of the the kind yeah, of segmenting. The, the slicing. So I don't know, Will, if you want to pose your question to, to Ian. Well, sure. I, I think, well, it's a little unfair that we've had Ian go last because he was our first submission that we received. Yeah. But <laughs> I think it is a good person to have go last because I would imagine that if someone were to watch all of these video essays, Ian's would perhaps be the one that someone would go, what? <laughs> like, is this a video essay? Um, and of course it absolutely is. Um, but I'm just thinking if, if we are to think of a video essay as like, you know, a narr- voiceover narration, whatever, what someone might particularly think, what one might usually think of as a video essay, Ian's might not fit the mold. Um, so Ian, I think we're all eager to hear how your idea for your video came about um, and kind of just how you would speak about it generally. Um, but also, of course, like everyone else, how it fits um, okay. the theme of journeys. Because, uh, yeah. So, so I was working on a on a few ideas for North by Northwest um, when the suggest the uh, invite came out, and um, it was very different from uh, what what I came up with with this. I, I was very interested in Cary Grant's persona in uh, in the film as a star, and the way he is always central. Um, to the film, as, as soon as you see uh, Cary Grant in that film, you know immediately that he is the star and he's going to carry the story. And I'm very interested how there, there are a surprising number of uh, black people in North by Northwest, but very much in the margins, and how they how Grant contrasts with those. So I was I was kind of thinking about those issues. Uh, so that's kind of where this, the idea of the central screen. So what I did was oh, everything is the uh, absolute centre of the screen that is showed in the film. Uh, and I've always been fascinated with North by Northwest as the, the idea of the journey in North by Northwest. And I see it very much as an Oedipal journey. Um, now I, did, I did actually make a film about North by Northwest um, a couple of years ago, which is probably more complicated than the one that I've put together uh, for this and with that one I, I recognised when I went through the film that the exact central centre point of the film exactly halfway through is where he is um, has gone to the uh, dust bowl and the old gentleman gets off the bus so that is the absolute middle point of the film and you think the first point of the film you see Hitchcock trying to get onto the bus and the final shot of the film is the train <laughs> And so what I did from that was take that central point of the film and start running it backwards to the front of, to the beginning of the film and forwards to the uh, end of the film, which is kind of Grant's journey. I see that central point as his loss of innocence. So I've done a film like that before. So this one was, you know, it's a, it's a journey of ev- what happens with every film, really, in that a director such as Hitchcock there, is trying to uh, present a journey, but doing it in two hours. So it's a, it's a journey of Cary Grant's development as a as a person, but he's doing it in, in a very shortened time. So I guess I'm taking that to an extreme and saying, can I show this whole film within five minutes? So I've done that by splitting the screen into seven, uh, seven strips, and uh, it also runs at seven times the speed. Um, so, and, and, and it, I think it just shows how central Grant is throughout the film. Um, and I think the second question you asked about, uh, using this and learning about, um, uh, what Grant brings to it, um, I'll just contrast it very much with Vertigo, um, and as central as... Uh, James Stewart is to that film, um, Grant is to this. But the, the the playfulness that I think Grant brings to this is, is, is just makes it so uh, so so defined by him. Um, sorry, I'm not explaining that very well. It's why why I make films <laughs> rather than speak about them. Uh, 
I can I chip in? I mean, I really I loved your film. It reminded me of the um, Sol Bass opening titles. Of exactly. the that's, that, yeah, that's what kind of inspired it as well. Yeah, I wanted to mention that. Yeah, so the very first shot of the um, office blocks uh, fragmenting, and I wanted to bring that in as well. The idea of film, as you said, about a material uh, thing that you play with. So it's the film strips that you're putting together. Uh, the the McGuffin in the film is the microfilm that's uh, uh, there. So so yeah, it's, it's playing on all all the things within within the film and the editing of the film uh, to make a story, to make a journey. Uh, yeah, it's just trying to play on all of those things that are there really, and and the fun of it, and 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 the manic. Uh, of the journey as well, which Grant so so carries it. I, I wanted to get across the the you know the idea that it is manic, but at the same time Grant brings a solidity to it, so he does centre it. And uh, you know you, you earlier mentioned that he can bring great emotion into scenes as well as being slapstick and and funny at the same time. I think he does that in in the scenes with um, Eve Kendall. You know, there's a kind of Almost a Sergei Eisensteinian um, metric filmmaking to your piece as well of the kind of the seven sevens. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to set things so that you have to do them a certain way, regardless of uh, what the end product uh, is. <laughs> yeah, just go through that process and and see what happens without uh, manipulating it too much. One thing I did um, think about as I was watching your film is uh how central the opening music is to it and i noticed that you decided to kind of just keep the same yeah. music score in it like the music doesn't mimic uh the deformation of the video mm -hmm. i guess and i was wondering did you think about doing anything with the sound at all or was that just because you just wanted to focus on the image itself um i think i think, I think the sound has the the speed uh, that holds it together. It, to, to do that kind of uh, visual, you, you'd need something that gives it real grounding. Um, and the music, I just think, does that very, very well. Um, so there are some people um, observing this conversation and there's a few comments in the chat. So somebody um, has said, this has been amazing. Somebody likes my outfit, which is always good. Um, <laughs> um, but I just wondered whether there's anybody in the chat who wants to ask any questions that you might have watched these videos or you want to have to comment at all. Have you ever experienced video essays before? Is this something new to you? Um, or, you know, any comments or questions or feedback in the chat would be really nice to feed in. Well, one, one question I had, and when I think of Cary Grant's movement, which is something we, we see here, I uh, think of how he uses his whole body. Like I, I think of the shot in particular in To Catch a Thief when he's walking down that staircase kind of at the beginning, and then he gets to the bottom and the, the waiter corks the champagne and it like overflows. Um, and whereas Cormac, is his, his, his body is actually quite compressed and you don't see a lot of parts of his his body uh which i thought was i, I just I would not have thought of because that's kind of what let when i first thought of journeys i thought of okay movement carries whole body how he empowers the screen whereas with yours he's very restricted um and i don't really have a question to go off that <laughs> format you want to chime in but if, i would just be curious to have how Cary grants his body itself functions um as in this whole process of a video essay, because at the end of the day, we are reappropriating his body um, above anything else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, sorry. Sorry, we'll do Cormac, Ian, and then Anna. Okay. <laughs> That's how I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> from I suppose from from the the, the clips that I used, um, I was interested in that motion and and. I mean, there are some really wonderful moments in that I, when you're talking about it, it, his body and his movement um, that I didn't use. And one of them is the um, when he sees Tony Curtis through the periscope and that little interaction with the rest of the crew. And there's there's something about the way he's he's kind of hanging on it. His arms are hanging over the edge, and it's also very casual and really loose. Um, and I think that's what I took away from his movement through that tight corridor space. Is he? he He's uh, he kind of he he fills the space, but he's also very loose and very 
very relaxed in his movement through it. It's not um, it's not the kind of the racing figure that you see in your your average submarine film. It's it's um, he's crossing one of Ian's rooms. You know, he's 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 moving from door to door, and he's doing it. He, he's doing it with that same kind of casual, self assured purpose, and and that's that's the movement that really struck me when I was watching it. Ian. Um, yeah, just um, something I meant to say earlier. I mean, I, I don't think I'm really analysing anything in my video particularly. Um, I'm just sort of like kind of compiling things. Um, but one thing I was hoping, um, I actually on on, on um, kind of a Facebook page, I put out a kind of a call for anyone that wanted to kind of take my video and try and do something else with it to maybe kind of give it more of a critical edge. Um, and I've, I've had one taker for that um, so far. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of intending to do some different versions as well but um but the per the person that says he's going to give it a go was sort of saying he was kind of really interested in 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 kind of um like carried grant's hands and how he uses his hands and and kind of was going to do something there but i actually wanted to throw the question back to to, to you will because obviously you you contributed um a video yeah. essay for this as well and one one of the um things i thought was really interesting you you've kind of you you've um shown a scene from to catch a thief um along with the sort of the um the final kind of shooting script um, and I wondered because the shooting script is so kind of precise um, uh, uh, about what what the scene entails. I wondered what you thought Grant's actual embodied performance uh, of the, the the instructions kind of added to to what was there in in the script. <laughs> Yeah, it's a great question, um, and I hope I can live up to it. But I guess um, a, a little background, I had received a research grant to go to the Herrick Library where I read the shooting script, which is a treat, but I wasn't there to look at To Catch a Thief, but I love that film. And I, in the Hitchcock, <laughs> everything, a million things are written about Hitchcock, but that's one that has, you know, not a ton has been written about it compared to maybe some of the other works. So I figured why not take a look at what was there? And I felt as I read that, like, I, it, it almost felt like someone was describing after the fact what Cary Grant was doing. Like, I could picture that scene in my head with the language, but I, but I would, assume, so I don't know if he, but I would assume it was not written after the fact, <laughs> um, which I thought was just stunning. And I, and I, I one I don't know if this answers your question, but the thing I thought was that Cary Grant lives up to our highest expectations of the written word, and I felt that there there's something about that that movement because there's there's no dialogue, there's no know how to just his trousers if you think of it in the the narrative thing of the film because he's in his clothes and then he's in the boat and then he jumps out and all of a sudden he's laying on his back in the trousers so there's kind of this like magical mystical quality to it. Um, Grace Kelly has not been introduced in the film, so she's just kind of she's all buttoned up or whatever, which is an interesting contrast uh, with Carrie Grant, who's just wearing these short little trousers. Um, and so I, I think for me, when I think about To Catch a Thief, I think of it as Hitchcock trying to say, how can I make the most beautiful film that I possibly can? Like to, for me, To Catch a Thief is almost a complete aesthetic experience, perhaps no better captured by then that one walking up the beach uh, scene um and so that's why i was so fascinated by it because i think when we think of scripts we think of dialogue but here's a here's a script that i'm using that has no dialogue it's all description it's all imagery so how does that manifest um on screen and so this kind of interplay between whoever wrote that script hitchcock's direction and then carrie grant embodying that better than i guess anyone else can <laughs> Kendall was asking Roberto about his split screen. What, tell us about why you split the screen up in the way that you did and the repetition. Uh, me? Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I, well, it's interesting because I had the, the, had the problem of text on screen, which I'm not a huge fan of as a video essay tactic. Um, sometimes it feels like cheating and I had a ton of text. Um, and so I was trying to figure out because the script alternates back and forth between describing Cary Grant and Grace Kelly when they're on at the same time. Um, and so for me, I have done some work on Grace Kelly's star image. She's someone who fascinates me even more than Cary Grant, but we can get to that another day. Um, but, and so I really wanted to highlight her and kind of remove Cary from the picture to kind of show that there's actually, the scene's very layered. It's not just Cary Grant walking on the beach. It's Grace Kelly discovering him. It's her being mysterious. It's her, in that film, she is very much an equal to Cary Grant. 
um, in as far as her willingness to, she wants to be the thief. She wants to, you know, solve the case. She outwits him. She's the one who figures out that she, he's the cat, you know? Um, and so I kind of wanted to, even though he's in the foreground, I wanted to give her equal footing in the scene um, because the script gives her equal footing as well. Uh, but if you're just going off the images, you might not think that because he so, he so dominates it. I never even knew that Grace Kelly was in that scene until you made that film. <laughs> so, yeah, she's cool. all covered up. But so I think yeah, I wanted to say something a little while ago. I don't know whether yeah, my, no, yeah. We're, we're, we're talking about at uh, Carrie Grant's uh, movement, gesture, and I uh, just wanted to mention this wonderful book by uh, Luc Moulet. I don't know if you heard of this book. It's called uh, Politique des Acteurs, and there is a chapter dedicated to Carrie Grant's movement, and it's marvelous the way he, he writes about, you know, how Carrie Grant uses his body, his eyes, and uh, so I was just... Uh, you put that in the chat, the name of the book. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, do I have access to the chat, actually? Yeah, I think so. Hopefully. Right. Yeah. There's a lovely question here for everybody. Can everybody tell us a little bit about how they got interested in Cary Grant? Where are you from? And what's your gateway movie to Cary Grant? Yeah, I'll just like, should we just, shall we just, Charlotte, why don't you start off with that question? Me? I think, yeah, I think you should answer that one first. <laughs> uh, I don't I don't know. Um, the Cary Grant Festival <laughs> came because I was researching Bristol cinemas and I found out that he used to go to these different cinemas with his parents. Um, and that's how I became really obsessed with him. Uh, I don't think I properly knew that he was from Bristol. Um, and so that was a journey for me to kind of find out who he was and to encounter his work with a different um, understanding that he was a Bristolian. Which, um, it, is, feels important to me and it feels important to the journey that he's been on, not only geographically, but also psychologically um, it, and what comes through in his performances. And although uh, I can't remember, was it who had said that they were reading the biographies, but it didn't help? Was it you, Cormac? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think um, I'm yeah I'm more interested in his performance and stuff, but I am interested in his biography because I'm, I'm interested in, in his relationship to Bristol because that's kind of what I'm curating through doing the Cary Grant Festival. And I think they are connected. But I think one of the things that struck me just listening to all of you guys was one of the hopes that I had of doing this event was to take Cary Grant seriously as an object of study. I think it's so easy to dismiss him as this kind of frothy, good looking kind of eye candy. And um, I think what each of your films does is to kind of really analyse him and the technique um, that it, that goes into those performances, and it's it's that was really a lovely outcome for me to see that. So that's I don't know what my gate. I haven't answered a question. Sorry, somebody else. <laughs> Shall we go around and everyone can give their gateway movie recommendation sure. uh, to supplement sure. that? Sure, we'll start with. Um, uh, let's start with Roberto. What oh. would be the one movie that? What would be your gateway movie to someone who maybe wants to, you know, fall in love with Cary Grant? What movie would you recommend them? Oh, oh, I don't know about that, but I, I will say that the movie, one of my happiest movie experiences watching Cary Grant was uh, with North by Northwest, but it was because I watched it in this wonderful theater in Austin. So I do have that memory of Cary Grant, of of having seen this in this big white theater and. Everybody was a huge Hitchcock fan, and it was one of the most memorable movie-going experiences I've had. So it is linked to Cary Grant there. But, but um, just to, not to hog the thing, but um, seeing North by Northwest on a big screen is an incredible experience because when I first put um, the first Cary Grant Festival, I hired the Hippodrome, which is the theatre that he um, worked in as a boy, and it's a 2000 seater and we didn't fill it and I'd never run an event before and I had no idea what I was doing but it was a good audience it's like three four hundred people which is a big audience for cinema going and I'd seen it on DVD I'd never seen it in a cinema and I was literally jumping out of my seat and cowering and it was just such an embodied reaction to the film because it's it's meant to be seen on the big screen and which is why it's sad that the festival has to be online um because it, it the, uh, the reason I do the festival is to see his films on the big screen with an audience but yeah that's a really great gateway can I share a story real quick yeah before I think last it was last December maybe I was in an actual movie theater which feels crazy now um I was I think it was film form in New York and I saw North by Northwest on the big screen and when uh Ava Marie Saint it falls off Mount Rushmore. The woman behind me kicked my chair um, and yelled, <laughs> which I think is the 
I was, and she was so apologetic. And I said, <laughs> that was amazing. Thank you for kicking me. Like, that's <laughs> why I study film. Like, thank you. It was the most beautiful thing that's like ever happened is getting kicked in the movie theater by North by Northwest. It was awesome. All right. Let's, uh, uh, Kendall, do you want to tell us what would you, what would you recommend? Uh, oh, good. Gateway is always a Hitchcock film. I mean, to any fan new to classics, I would recommend that. But I do think that Harry Grant did his best work with Hitchcock. Hitchcock got something out of him emotionally that, you know, it's the full package. It's, it's the physicality, the, the, the speech, everything. So Notorious, um, North by Northwest. I don't know, just watch them all. <laughs> Stay up on it. <laughs> uh, Anna, Marine? Wow, um, that's a tough one. Um, <laughs> Because I really, uh, I'm, I, I love a lot of Cary Grant's movie, but um, and um, I don't know about one, but uh, the Hitchcock movie definitely notorious. I definitely love this film, but um, but I love also all the Howard Hooks, like uh, bringing up baby. This film, I don't know how many times I've seen it with my daughters, and uh, the Philadelphia Story. I love this film as well, and the film with Irene Dune. Um, so many films so it's uh and i love people will talk uh monkevich film and um, it's a less uh, known uh Caragrand movie but it's a uh, very beautiful one as well so i don't know watch them all <laughs> <That's my recommendation. laughs> Philip? Uh, well you think you have to include north by northwest that was my first Cary Grant film I ever saw when I was a kid. And beyond that, I think maybe Arsenic and Old Lace would hold up well with its dark humor and cynicism. I think that would be a, a compelling watch as well. Cormac? Um, yeah, I, I, whatever, third or fourth for North by Northwest. But um, but this process has, has definitely made me a fan of Operation Petticoat. I think it, <laughs> it comes at that period in his career where he's on a massive upswing, you know, um, but it's it's just got a really easy charm to it, which is really endearing. So yeah, petticoat's fun. <laughs> In Garwood. <laughs> I guess I'd give another vote to bringing up baby. Um, I, I can't remember when I saw it a, a long time ago. And it was just one of those films where I guess at the time I probably had that sort of kind of cliched view of black and white films kind of being slower than modern films. And um, it really kind of, that was a film that I really remember sort of shattering my kind of con preconceptions in that way, because it's just so fast and, and like the, the di dialogue, you know, it's, it's quite, it's hard to kind of actually keep up, up, up with. It's actually a lot faster paced than, than kind of, kind of mo modern comedies. Um, but I'm actually doing a class next week, um, which is themed around the Cary Grant festival. And um, I got the um, one thing we're going to do is, is kind of watch something obviously all online. And I did a kind of a poll amongst us, students i gave them the sort of a choice of six different films i think and they they chose his girl friday so that's 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 my students choice so i'm looking forward to <laughs> watching that again um over the weekend one of my Ian, I go? um so hitchcock would have been my own gateway to Cary grant really um and i agree with charlotte i think is uh, because of the ease of his performance i think it is often underrated um, I think Notorious is probably his best performance. I also like him in Suspicion. But if uh, for uh, anybody looking for a film who's never watched Cary Grant, where you can't help but fall in love with his charm, I think is The Awful Truth. I thought of another one. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. It was. I think it was my first Cary Grant film. I remember my dad saying, hey, watch this. Watch these opening credits. Charade. Yes. Mm. Yeah, charade, yes. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> I think if you knew nothing about classic films and you watch Charade, it, it would definitely whet your appetite. Absolutely. I have to give a shout out to Only Angels Have Wings, um, yeah. which I think is among his best performances and the best films. And I'll give another fun recommendation, which is The Pride and the Passion, um, <laughs> which is Cary Grant, Frank Sinatra, and Sophia Loren. And it's ridiculous, but uh, very, very fun. Um, if you mostly just seeing the three of them interact is most of the fun, but they have to transport this huge cannon across uh, Spain that they've stolen from the French. It's a, it's a it's hilarious, full of sexual innuendo, as you can imagine, but uh, uh, really great. Um, well, Charlotte, I know has to put her son to bed. So it's unless anyone has any, Charlotte, any final words, um, I just yeah. want to say thank you once again to everybody for making videos and for joining us on a Friday night and for some of you a very late Friday night given uh, time zones. <laughs> <laughs>